Welcome back to the Plunder Den. In this week's episode, we're going to do a painting tutorial of that fortification we built in our last episode. So kind of over the last few series of episodes, we've been building a frontier fort. Now, I plan on using it for uh, Blood and Plunder's expansion, Fire on the Frontier. Uh, but again, these are pieces you could use for other games. Uh, blockhouses and palestine forts were used all over uh, through history and doesn't necessarily have to be used in this time frame. Um, and again, that's what I like to do with my uh, terrain, make it versatile, and uh, you can use it for other game settings. All right, so let's take a look at it, uh, the finished product here. Uh, I'm going to try to fit it all on the screen here. Uh, obviously, it's too big to show you, so I'll just show you in sections. And you can see the color scheme matches the blockhouse. So if you're following the blockhouse uh, paint tutorial, this is a very similar scheme because I want it to feel like it's part of the same fort. But again, you could use these pieces separately. So we've got some weathering in there. Just showing you the, uh, you can put a little bit of green on there. Maybe a little plant life's growing up on there. Uh, and uh, we've got uh, our shingles, which match pretty closely to the blockhouse. And I'll just show you the outer wall. I spent a lot of time painting these uh, timbers out here, making sure they, you know, they have a little bit of gray starting on the bottoms here, kind of just the color going up, and they still have a bit of the, the new wood look to them. As this this fort's not a hundred years old, uh, it's a fairly new fort, so there would be some weathering, uh, but not essentially, uh, maybe not so much aging. All right, so let's just take a look at uh, the backside. Um, mostly uh, stonework on here. Um, and some aging, some weathering on the top there. So I just wanted to uh, show you these two sections. So this is the bigger section. Uh, it's a lot like the other section, uh, but I just wanted to show you this part because I, I did some modifications on this particular part. I added uh, this opening here and over here. So these were... Uh, uh, suggestions uh, from Joseph Forrester from Blood and Pigment, uh, which is an excellent idea. Um, it gives this fortification a lot more options and uh, gives me more advantages in battle. So I'll show you what I mean. So this opening here uh, would cover the outer wall and gatehouse. So I could shoot cannon fire, rain fire down all the people trying to siege the wall or break the gate down, uh, and this would cover that outer wall. Uh, so that would give me an advantage on that side. And then having the opening over here, of course, the, the wall would be right here. And this opening would cover that outer wall as well. So that's an excellent suggestion. Uh, and uh, I took advantage of that. I just used a, a Dremel tool, by the way, to cut this out. <laughs> just sheared off those tops. Uh, I did it just before I painted it. So uh, you can't really uh, tell what I've done there. But uh, that was an excellent idea. Uh, and uh, I definitely took advantage of that and, and changed that fort. Um, so I just want to do another shout out for uh, the Blood and Pigment uh, page. So on the YouTube channel here, the uh, Blood and Pigment has an excellent uh, channel, uh, especially if you're a new player to Blood and Plunder or you're thinking about getting involved in Blood and Plunder. Uh, they have a wide range of videos uh, with uh, faction reviews. Uh, they cover uh, ship, you know, ship options and uh, their gameplay. Uh, they have live battle reports. So I know that my channel i just got some short battle reports but they have a live one where they you can watch them play out the entire match uh get a good idea of how the game is played um so that's uh, something interesting for a new player or somebody that's thinking about uh playing blood and plunder is an outstanding game uh and they covered uh really well uh they just released a new video uh, nations and factions uh for uh blood and plunder players and so our new blood and plunder players I would suggest if you're a new player, check that video out. There's a lot of good information in there, uh, especially if you're wondering about the cost of things or how can I get started uh, uh, You know, in an economical way. They give you all the different types of, of packages and bundles that you can get uh, to get started and, and really what you need. And kind of some things maybe you want to steer away from for a new player, but, but down the road uh, uh, you'd want a, a more experienced player to purchase. So they really break that down really well in that video. 
So I really suggest if that you're a new player or you're thinking about getting involved in Blood and Plunder, or even if you're an experienced player and you want some more information, I still find useful information on there, definitely. Uh, I'm not a super experienced player, and I find lots of useful facts on that channel. So big shout out to those guys uh, over at Blood Pigment, uh, and I suggest you uh, check them out. All right, if you guys like what we're doing here at the Plunder Den, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Plunder Den and get first-hand information on when we start these kind of projects. So let's get down to the table and let's start painting this fort. Okay. So I'm going to start this uh, paint project uh, the same way I do all my terrain uh, with the uh, multi-surface uh, black craft paint by Folk Art. Uh, and I was just showing you all the different uh, components uh, where you were going to paint all the pieces black using my same old trusty brush that I use on all my projects. Uh, and similar to the paint job on the bark and uh, the blockhouse, uh, we are going to go with the grains and uh, paint this in. So you can see we uh, texturalized the woods, the popsicle sticks. I want to make sure I keep those grains. So we're gonna we're gonna paint it uh, with it, uh, going in the same direction essentially. So I'm just demonstrating that really quickly here. Right before I moved on to paint, uh, I realized I wanted to uh, cut those. Uh, uh, openings in the in the wall as I mentioned in the intro uh, so I got my Dremel tool and I cut those uh, out uh, so I have four openings now uh, before I continued on with my paint job I almost started the paint without it <laughs> but I managed to uh, remember to do it before I went too far with the paint job all right so this is after I've covered everything uh, in the uh, black craft paint I'm just showing all the components uh, everything looks good um uh, and I really, uh, this black crap paint really just makes everything uh, snug and tight and uh, kind of just uh, puts everything to, uh, together here. Just trying to uh, show you everything in the screen here, but uh, these pieces are a little big. Should probably uh, clean my space off here a little bit better. All right, so I'm going to go to that big paintbrush I always use. Uh, going to real brown. Uh, is the color I use for, uh, well, pretty well all my terrain as the undertone um, for uh, for all the other colors that are coming up. Uh, this is the same as the docks uh, and the blockhouse. Uh, now I'm going against the grains because I want to highlight those. Uh, and I'm going to make the color more uh, apparent in the center uh, and fade it out on the side, so not as... Uh, apparent on, on the edges because we want to keep all those good uh, black undertone we have there uh, just to create shadowing and uh, in this entire piece so you're not going to cover the whole thing you're just going to uh, hit the center all right so this is after i've added uh, the real brown to all the pieces you can see that the edges are nice and dark there's still some black in there uh, and that's what i'm just pointing out uh, there I've hit all the uh, the timbers all the way around. Uh, we're going to add a lot of different colors to those timbers uh, to get it uh, to give it a little more uh, weathered look. Uh, and same thing for the stairs. So I'm just kind of showing you all the pieces. Um, hit the shingles too. So I went an upwards motion with those shingles just to kind of hit the edges and highlight them. All right. So now we're going to go to the bark brown. And we're going to do all the pieces here. All right, so uh, we just kind of fast forwarded. Didn't want to show you uh, my, uh, me brushing it. I did it the exact same way as I did with the real brown. Uh, and I've shown it in several other videos. But I uh, just want to emphasize again, uh, highlighting the middle of, uh, of the, uh, of the uh, top deck. Just trying to uh, you know, show where the weathering is going to be. So just laying the groundwork, same as the docks in the blockhouse. We did the same thing in those videos. Okay, so I'm going to show you a little more of this uh, technique, the dry brushing technique. So I kind of just tap it. So I didn't put the, the bark brown on this, uh, the gatehouse yet. I just wanted to show you uh, how I apply that. So you're going to just tap it. So that way it hits the edges and any of those uh, 
uh, texturized uh, wood grains that we've added to those popsicle sticks and, and uh, you don't have to go really hard on that uh, just uh, tapping it and I'm just going to show you on the shingles too as well I know it's just kind of fast forwarding some areas here but I, I, I figured it'd be important to show you guys that so we're going to go to our friend here, Peblo, uh, the orange color, and uh, we're going to add some more highlights uh, all over the piece, even on the stonework, uh, just having uh, some different colors in the stonework. Similar to all the other uh, uh, stonework paint jobs that I've done, just uh, having multi-colored bricks uh, on an undertone. Uh, I just pointed out that we're not going to put any uh, of this uh, orange on the, uh, on the roof. But again, uh, tapping it very lightly. Uh, I did show you that paper towel. Make sure you uh, take a lot of the paint out on the paper towel. Uh, this stuff's really uh, bright, so you don't need very much, just a little bit. Uh, and see, I've already added a little bit too much, but I'm going to add other colors over top, so it'll be okay. So now I'm going to do a mixture. Uh, I've done this before, a real brown and the yellow ochre. Uh, and this is to uh, increase the weathering on the top decks uh, where they're walking and the cannons are firing and all that. It would be weathered down. Um, so we've already laid down the groundwork with our real brown and bark brown, uh, lightened up that center. And now I'm going to continue lighten it uh, by adding these two colors together. Uh, and we're going to hit the inside of the gatehouse on the on the, on the uh, floor and the uh, top decks of uh, both these uh, uh, wall pieces. So I'm just going to show you a little bit more of this technique. Um, I kind of make circular motions. And in this case, I, I start from the center uh, and then I kind of work out. So I work my way out to the edges. So I'm kind of fading it out. So it should be the brightest in the center. Uh, and usually that's where the most traffic is. Uh, and it gets uh, darker as you go further out. So the great thing about using popsicle sticks, and I've mentioned this before, uh, you can really work the paint into uh, those uh, wood planks. Um, this is something that I couldn't do if I used uh, foam on the top. So uh, that's the advantage of using uh, actual real wood. So you can see I've done the other pieces just showing you that I've hit those other areas with that same color. So now I'm going to use that same mixture and I'm going to hit all the tips of these uh, of the timbers that are on the outer wall. Uh, so we're going to lay several different colors onto those tips uh, and making them lighter and lighter as we go. So now we're going to go even lighter. So uh, I'm going to continue using the real brown and yellow ochre, uh, but the mix is going to be a little bit more um, uh, with a little bit more yellow ochre than, than uh, real brown. Uh, and then again, we're going to hit all those tips uh, and we're going to continue our uh, brightening and weathering of the top deck. So I, again, I, I think I mentioned in previous videos that these paints are pretty bright when you stick them on. Uh, don't panic too much. <laughs> they will dry darker. Uh, it just, it's really bright when you first put it on. Uh, most paints will, will dry darker and these ones will. Um, but you keep working it in, uh, and you're just working from the center and pushing it out to the edges. So I'm actually pushing quite, quite, uh, hard on, on these popsicle sticks, uh, and really working that, uh, paint into, uh, these planks. Then you get a nice looking uh, weathered look to your, your top deck. I'm going to go further up. I'm going to do the gatehouse uh, floors uh, and get that all uh, nice looking. And then, of course, all the tips. I did add some a little bit to the uh, gateway door and some of the brickwork. Um, and then, of course, you can see I did all the tips uh, and added that uh, color in there. I'm showing you all the other areas that I've I've hit with that uh, mixture. All right, so now we're going to move on to uh, our camel color. So this is kind of the beginning of the stonework, uh, but also I want to use this camel to lighten again those tips of those. Uh, 
the timbers on the outer wall there. <clears throat> so we're going to continue on lightening the, those tips. So that's what I'm kind of showing you here. And again, uh, I'm adding several different colors over top of each other and to lighten that up. Uh, in the stonework, you've seen me do it in other videos. I always start with camel. And I plan on uh, hitting all the stones in here. Now, it, <clears throat> it did get a little tricky to get in between those timbers. I just had to use a smaller brush. Uh, as you can see, uh, you know, maybe in the future I might have done something different. Maybe I would have painted that part first and then glued them on. Uh, but really, I like to craft everything first and then go on to it. So then I'm going to use my Desert Yellow uh, Skeleton Bone uh, Necromatic Flesh and uh, Necrotic, sorry, Flesh and then Mummy Robe. So those are the uh, four colors I always use after Camel to uh, do all my stonework. Uh, and I'm going to add... Uh, a bit of those other uh, like desert yellow and uh, mummy robe uh, to the t tips of those uh, uh, timbers again. So now we're going to that uh, dark gray uh, necromancer cloak. Uh, we got ash gray uh, and we got uh, a matte white uh, and uh, black, matte black. So these are all uh, Army Painter paints, uh, and uh, we are going to hit the shingles, uh, and we're going to hit the the bases of these timbers. So kind of in the intro, I was talking about weathering uh, and aging some of these uh, timbers. It was, uh, you know, wood turns gray over time, um, so I want to capture that. So sorry, that, car, that color is dark stone, that first color. I guess I said dark gray, but that's dark stone. And I just wanted to briefly show you this technique. So I use that smaller brush, and similar to when I added it was a big brush, I'm going to uh, uh, just lift up, and you just want to hit edges of that of those shingles. And you can see I've added some of those grays uh, in there. Uh, and it just adds those multicolored to those timbers. It gives it a real aged look uh, uh, that I like. All right, so moving on to Necromancer Cloak, uh, and I apply it the same way. Just keep hitting everything. And then I went to the, uh, I added that all to the uh, timbers as well. Great, so now we're going to go to the ash gray. This is a bit of a lighter color. And same technique again. Um, just going to pull forward with this smaller brush. Uh, and just a reminder, I, I don't wash my brush in between these colors. I just like the mixture of play of colors in, in my brush. So I just keep going from color to color. Um, unless I'm doing something completely different, I usually just you keep using the same brush and keep adding colors to it. So I would have added that uh, light gray also to uh, those timbers. So then moving into uh, the white and I, like I said, I did this in the uh, other previous video for the uh, blockhouse. Uh, this adds a little bit of uh, implied uh, texture uh, to the shingles. Uh, remember, I've used cardstock. Uh, and maybe in the future, I'll try doing shingles with foam uh, and add real texture to them. But uh, I just paint it on. And I also added little uh, white specks to the bottoms of those timbers. Uh, if you look at uh, wood that's been out in elements, it starts getting different kinds of uh, fungus and molds and frosts and stuff like that on. So I want to uh, add that to it. All right, so now I'm adding the matte black. And so I'm just going to tone down the roof a little bit. So it's a little bright uh, with all that white I've added on there. Uh, and that's okay. That's what I wanted. I wanted to have that implied uh, texture underneath. And I'm also going to hit certain areas on the wall and on the timbers just to add that smoke effect or dead plant life. All right, so just kind of giving you an overlook of everything. I've kind of gone through several steps. Uh, and now we're moving to adding a little plant life. So we got army green. Uh, we got the military shader, a wash, uh, commando green. Uh, and those are the colors I'm going to use for adding a, uh, a painted implied plant life. I do plan on adding flocking, but I wanted to add some paint colored first. Uh, Gunmetal is for uh, 
the doors just gonna add uh, like some iron rods on there um, and then uh, we have uh, some uh, uh, wash there to uh, just kind of take the brightness of that uh, metal away and then I'm gonna add just a tad of a dry rust to it so that's a strong tone wash and a dry rust we're gonna add to that uh, gun metal so then we're gonna move to adding some flocking uh, so we've got some field grass here. Uh, we've got some uh, grass green. These are two, I usually mix those two together. Uh, gets a nice real bright color uh, for the bottom. And then I got some, some assorted tufts here. And I'm just gonna add in a few different areas and add a little plant life to the bottom of this uh, entire fence line, this entire wall, sorry. <laughs> All right, so this is a completed project. We got our uh, native warriors with uh, Canadian French militia uh, and uh, French uh, soldiers uh, sieging this uh, fort. Oh, I ran into a tree. <laughs> all right, uh, anyway, so this is the finished wall. Just wanted to get a good look at all that uh, detail we added to those timbers, uh, to the door, uh, and uh, so, you know all that plant life we've added. Uh, and I just really want you to get a good look at all the uh, different colors that we added in there. So we're going to kind of move through this entire fortification uh, and take a look at the uh, uh, completed project. Now, I'm probably going to build a second wall. Uh, I probably won't film a video for that. Uh, that'll be done at a later date uh, because it will be built the same way. I, I just uh, I didn't need to make a second video for that. Um, there's our blockhouse, and we're just going to work our way around to the other side here. Just wanted to show you that other side as well uh, of the wall. There's a nice top view, all that weathering. Uh, and I'm really happy how this uh, uh, paint job and this project worked out. It, it looks really great. And, uh, you know, in the future, I'll, like I said, I'll build that second half and then I'll have a completed, complete fort. Uh, but uh, well, I'll spare you guys that. <laughs> we'll go to something different next week. All right, so we get uh, just one more look. There's a French coming up on the docks, uh, making a return to the, the plunder down here uh, and uh, invading this fort. All right, so if you guys like what we're doing here in the Plunder Den, make sure you smash that like button and uh, consider subscribing to the Plunder Den. Get first hand information when I start these kind of projects. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next one.